And so what common things do you actually see people do wrong when they first start training? Yeah, I think people do a lot of things wrong. And one thing that people make the mistake of is trying to learn too many exercises. We're a real stimulus addicted country, especially in the US where we're basically an entertainment generation where everything has to be fun, otherwise we don't want to do it. And that's okay to a degree, but at some times in life we have to make sacrifices and focus on things that may be somewhat monotonous or boring in order, for, in order to get to the larger picture. So the mistake I see a lot of people doing is they don't have the basics down. In other words, they're not good at overhead pressing, they're not good at pull-ups or bent over rows, they're not good at squatting, they're not good at deadlifts, they're not good at, at any of the foundation exercises, and yet every time they go into the gym they want to do something creative and something new and something fun so they're jumping around on a swiss ball they're doing these crazy exercises when they don't even have the basics down five basic moves focusing on that for a long time and getting really good is going to be more productive and the second thing is with diet people tend to overanalyze diet too much and they tend to follow for fads where they're just jumping from one diet to the next so they start one diet plan and then they read an article in a magazine and go wow that sounds good and jump on that one and then they do that for two weeks and they see something else, jump on that one. So they never stay consistent, lack of consistency, both with training and with diet. And, two, and the last thing is that I think people expect too much too soon. So they, they get way too discouraged way too easily. They jump into the gym and they're shocked that after a week they, haven't, they don't have the body of their dreams and then they get discouraged and give up. And same thing with diet. They eat clean for two weeks and then they go, oh, I miss my cakes and my pal my pasta, my this and that and so forth and they just give up and jump back on that. So the key is to be very realistic with what you're prepared to do, what you're prepared to commit to and how much time you can allocate to actually training. So what's the most important thing you think a beginner should learn when they first start training? Yeah, The most important thing to learn is basically those five movements that I'm talking about. You want to pick five exercises and get really good at them and not even worry about variation initially. And the five exercises that I really like are one is the standing military press where you're standing and you're basically just pressing a barbell overhead. That's one exercise. The other one is called the bent over row where you're basically your back is vertical and horizontal to the ground and you're just pulling a barbell to your lower stomach which is really good for your back, making your back really strong and resilient. And then squatting is very important for developing legs. There's no better exercise than the squat. So we all need to learn how to squat. And if you have some imbalances and whatnot, you need to work with a trainer that can help you develop full range of motion. And it's worth the time that it takes to do that, whether it's a body weight squat or with weights. Deadlift is another one of those really important exercises. And that's basically where you get into a squatting position and you pick up a barbell off of the floor. And then finally, you want to work on some core movements and not so much for a six pack because that's going to come from your diet more than your training. But you want to have a strong mix section to keep your back healthy. Also, anything you do in life or with lifting weights, your core is engaged, which is your lower back and your midsection. So if I'm pressing a weight overhead and I have a weak core, that's going to compromise my back and I'm more likely to get injured. If I'm doing a barbell squat, for example, and my core is really weak, I'm going to start leaning over more and start going towards bad form. So core strength is critical and we tend to focus a little bit too much on core strength now and, and for all the wrong reasons. We're doing a lot of core exercises in America where the goal is just to give someone some pretty abs and we're just doing a variety of core exercises to keep them entertained. But the real goal is to make sure that the midsection is strong so that we can do all the major exercises that give you the most bang for your buck. So core is very important but we want to focus on those other areas as well for strength. And then nutrition is the other area that has to be critical. If you don't have your nutrition nailed down, you're not going to lose weight. It's that simple because fat loss is hormone optimization. You need to have all of your hormones in an optimal range. So if your insulin levels is really high, and insulin is probably the most important hormone in our body, if we don't produce enough of it, we die. And if we reproduce too much, we end up being in a diseased state as well, diabetes and whatnot. So we need to keep insulin really sensitive where we don't need to produce much to get nutrition into the cells and the organs. And that's also going to give us the best fat loss results as well. You get someone to have better insulin sensitivity through a good diet, the weight's just going to start coming off and they're going to feel good too. Can you describe then in more detail the actual training program, what you teach, and talk me through the health benefits of it? Sure. My system is basically called Mahler's Aggressive Strength. So my system is basically a aggressive strength training. And basically what we do is we utilize tools and training tools that are effective for developing strength and wellness. So kettlebells is one of the things that I teach people and what I really like about kettlebells is that we do a lot of full body motions. So we're teaching the body how to work as one unit. 
a lot of people that do bodybuilding, they're doing stuff as curls and tricep push downs and chest presses, and they're doing things where you're working one body part at a time, or at least one focus at a time. Well, with kettlebells, we're working on more fluid motions. We're learning how to use our body in a synergistic manner. And this carries over to developing incredible cardiovascular capacity, incredible core strength, and just developing more fitness as well. So it's a very comprehensive approach. But kettlebells is not the only thing I do. I have a lot of people that work with barbells, dumbbells, basically the standard stuff that you would see in the gym. But it basically falls around that efficiency method that I'm talking about. And my philosophy of strength training is basically focus on five areas. We always want to focus on some kind of pressing motion, some kind of pulling motion, some kind of squatting motion for the quads, some kind of lower body pull, and then a core exercise. Because if you cover those five areas, you have a complete full body workout. And you're going to develop what I like to call functional strength, where it's going to carry over the things, other things you do, whether it's playing with your kids or moving heavy furniture around the house. You're going to have more strength to do those kind of things rather than having to, to pay somebody else to take care of stuff for you. So that's what I like about that. And also, it gives you a lot of confidence that carries over to other things in life. When your body becomes stronger and you're healthy and you don't have pain when you get up in the morning, you can't help but just be more confident and have a much more take charge attitude with everything else you do. So really what I like to focus on is how to get the best results in the most efficient manner and also how do we carry over what we learn from fitness to other areas of life and enhance everything. How long will it take then for a beginner, somebody who's a real novice, to see any results and what initial changes will they experience? Sure. Well, the less experience you have working out, the faster you're actually going to notice results. So if you're someone who's never lifted weights before, you're in for a pleasant surprise because you're going to notice some big changes within the first couple of weeks. I would say by week three to four, you're going to have a big strength increase, especially from where you started. But you're also going to start noticing some serious physique composition. You're going to develop more lean muscle and start losing some fat. At the same time, I have to predicate that by saying that nutrition is critical with any fat loss program or any muscle building program. But in, in particular with fat loss, nutrition is at least 70% if not more of your goals. So you can work out all day long doing the best programs in the world, but if you're eating donuts and pizza and stuff like that every night, you're just not going to get good results. But beginners with a good strength training program, you're going to notice some big differences within the first couple of weeks. And again, it's going to take several months, potentially years, depending on how out of shape you are, to notice dramatic effects where you're making a life-changing transformation. We like to look at magazines and see stuff, such stuff as 30-day transformations, 60-day transformations, 90-day transformations. Those kind of transformations generally, for the most part, only occur with someone who used to work out. So for example, let's say that when I was 25, I was really lean and strong and muscular, and then I quit working out for five years and I got out of shape. Well, you still have muscle memory. So if I jump back into the gym and I work back into what I used to do, I can get back to where I was pretty fast because I already have that foundation in my cells. Now, someone who's never worked out before, you're not going to make those kind of transformations in 90 days. If you're 100 pounds overweight, you're not going to go from that to just being a lean person in 90 days. It's just not going to happen, not in a healthy manner, even if you are able to pull it off. So really, people need to be very patient because the longer it takes you to get to where you want to go, the easier it is to keep it. The faster it takes you to get there, the harder it is to keep it because your body wants to stay with what's called homeostasis. It wants to stay with what it's used to. So if you've been overweight for 10 years and then you lose all the weight, let's say in 30 days theoretically, your body still wants to go back to where you were for the last 10 years. So it's easy for your body just to jump back. That's why so many people that have rapid fat loss, they always go right back to where they were because it takes time for your body to adapt to your new body. Now if you do it gradually, let's say you lose 100 pounds in the course of maybe 15 months or longer, that's a very gradual change and what happens is your body has a chance to adapt to each change along the way. So while it's not as fun, it takes a lot longer, once you get there, it's going to be a lot easier to maintain it indefinitely than it would be if you try to do things rapidly. Can you recount any inspiring stories about people you've actually worked with and um, tell us about how to improve their fitness and how you've changed their lives? The ones that are most important to me are ones where someone tells me that not only did they, did they follow my training system, but they read a lot of my philosophy articles and my whole aggressive strength approach and that allowed them to make dramatic changes. I mean, I had a lady who told me she was in an abusive relationship with a guy that was beating her for years. And that after reading some of my material and following some of my workouts, she developed the confidence and strength to get out of that relationship. So, I mean, stuff like that really blows me away. And I had another guy literally last week email me and tell me that he had been doing a job that he hates 
for over 10 years and that it was just ruining his personal life as well in addition to his professional life and that he finally had the courage to quit that and do exactly what he wants to do with his life and get in better shape and now everything is better in his life not only is he healthier but he's doing a job he likes and his relationship status is a lot better so there's lots of unreliable information on the internet are there any uh, myths that you can debunk well first with nutrition is where we see a lot of myths we see a lot of misinformation about nutrition in one of the things a lot of trainers will say is, hey, it's all calories in, calories out. At the end of the day, it's all about calories. And that's not really true at all. And I'll give you an example that really drives this point home. If I put someone on a diet which is 3,000 calories, let's say person A is on a diet which is lean protein, lots of fruits and vegetables, and then a lot of good essential fatty acids, some flaxseed oil, hemp seeds, walnuts, just a really clean diet. And they eat that three to four times a day. Now let's say the next person's on the same calories, 3,000 calories, but it's all really high refined carbohydrates, a lot of sugar, low protein, not much healthy fat. Now on a superficial level, they're both eating 3,000 calories per day. So both of them should have the same results with fat loss, assuming that's below what the energy expenditure that they're putting out. So if I put both of these people on the same program, they're not going to have the same results. Even though they're both eating 3,000 calories, it's not going to be the same thing. So it's not as simple as calories in, calories out, because it's all about hormone optimization when you want to lose fat or build muscle. The person A that's on that clean diet, they're going to have really optimal hormone levels, their insulin levels are going to be really good. So they're basically giving their body everything it needs to fuel good workouts and also recover and create a healthy environment, while person B, who's eating the same calories, because the calorie sources are not good at all, that person's probably not going to lose any weight. They're probably going to gain some weight and they're going to be really unhealthy. I never count calories myself and I don't encourage my clients to count calories. I go, look, we're going to focus on all of these food groups. Once a week, have whatever you want as a reward to yourself. But six days out of the week, we're going to focus on just eating high quality nutrition and that's going to nourish your body and give it what it needs to get the best results. What's the most important thing a beginner can do to ensure that their new exercise routine becomes a habit? Well, the most important thing to do is to decide how much time you can allocate to training. And you want to be really honest with yourself about that. I mean, if you're working 40, 50 hours a day, five to six days a week, and you're really tired after work, can you really put in 90 minute workouts a couple times a week? Probably not. Maybe, and maybe the first week or two, you'll have the mental toughness to push, but eventually you're going to crash. So you have to look at what can I do three to four times a week, weeks on end. And if it's only 20 minutes, that's fine because you can get a good workout in 20 minutes if you know what you're doing. And then you have to decide when should I work out. I like to work out four to six hours after I wake up, but I have, I'm an entrepreneur who works at home, so I can work out whenever I feel like it. Now, someone who works a day job and has a lot of family responsibilities, you might not be able to take a 30, 40 minutes in the middle of a workout, in the middle of a work day rather, to get a workout in. So you may have to do it first thing in the morning in order to get out of the way. You may have to do it after you get home from work. You have to decide which one's better for you. Are you wiped out after work? Are you less likely to do it because you just want to come home, have a meal, and watch TV and relax? If that's the case, get it in first thing in the morning. Wake up, loosen up, get it out of the way, get your day going, and at least you start your day in a very productive manner, number one, and two, you've got it checked off. You know you've got it locked in. And then the second thing is you have to make sure that you can follow a solid nutrition plan. And what I mean by that is if you're gone all day, if you don't have good food with you, chances are you're going to go to something convenient such as fast food or whatever your coworkers are eating. Maybe there's junk food on site where you work. I used to work many office jobs. We just had junk food buffets basically everywhere. So it not, not only is that hard to resist for a lot of people, but if you don't have another option, you're not going to take it. So what I tell people is always start the day with a really good breakfast. You don't want to spend a lot of energy on digestion first thing in the morning because your body's just waking up and you want to have energy to get your day going, not have a big meal and slow yourself down. Also it ensures that you're starting your day right with a lot of good nutrition, micronutrients, protein, fat and carbs to fuel you throughout the whole day. And then what you want to do is you want to have convenient snacks for whenever you're hungry. So I like to have almonds, pistachios, nuts and seeds fruits and vegetables, things that you can carry conveniently. Nuts and seeds being the most convenient because they're not going to rot if you leave them in your desk for a week or two and you don't need to have, you don't need to keep them cool with the ice or anything like that. So I think nuts and seeds are perfect snacks and they're really good for keeping your insulin level stable, your glucose and then giving you energy 
because they have a good amount of protein, fat, and carbohydrates as well. So those are great things to snack on. So you basically, you need to, you need to control your environment as much as you can. Because if your goal is fat loss, if your nutrition is not a lock, it doesn't matter how much you work out. Can you take me back to when you first got serious about exercise and fitness? Right, basically it happened when I was 18. I'm 36 now. But when I was 18, I was really out of shape. I wasn't working out much. I was really into the punk rock music scene. So I was going to a lot of shows, but I wasn't eating properly and I certainly wasn't exercising. So my dad bought me a home gym, which was just a bench, a barbell and some plates. And I put about maybe 90 pounds on the bar to start my first bench press set. And I literally got pinned with it. It just came all the way down and I couldn't lift it all the way up. And this is a really light weight for a man to be working with, even someone who doesn't work out. So that was kind of a real humiliating experience and also a wake up call of how out of shape that I was. And that really got the fires burning where I wanted to develop some strength. And once the strength started coming along, let's say the first couple of months, it started becoming very addictive. You start feeling better. There's a lot of confidence that comes with developing strength. You start carrying yourself with more confidence. And it really carries over to everything else you do in life. I found that I started making my diet cleaner because I wanted to have more productive workouts. And I started doing things that were more healthy, even at a very young age. And I started becoming very passionate about fitness at that age and just reading every book I could come across. It became a very strong hobby for me. What advice would you give to people who maybe break the habit? How can they get back on track again? Well, I mean, there's a real cliche in the U.S. where it says, you know, nothing tastes as good as how you feel when you're healthy and all that. And people kind of laugh, and people that are unhealthy kind of laugh when they hear that because they go, yeah, right. But, I, but it's, it's really true. When you, when you feel really strong and optimal, when you feel really healthy and your, your libido is healthy and your passion for life is healthy, you don't really want to mess that up. So what you want to do is get yourself to that state as soon as you can. And it may take a while. So you may have to persevere with some mental toughness. It may take several weeks to several months before you start feeling some of those things. For example, myself, people go, how do you resist junk food? And I go, I don't have to resist junk food because I don't want it. And now if I do want it, every once in a while I have it. And I can get away with that because one, it's only every once in a while. And two, I work out hard and I eat well, not most, but basically the majority of the year. So if I want to splurge every once in a while, and usually it's spontaneous, I do it, no big thing. So the most important thing is to realize that this is where you want to get. And you have to have the faith that if you put in the time and the effort, the mental toughness and the discipline with good nutrition, good training program, that you're eventually going to get to that training nirvana where you just feel good all the time. And now, now it's no longer about how do I resist these things because you no longer want those things anymore. This might sound a little bit cheesy, but like in the movie The Matrix, the first one, the really the only good one, <laughs> there's a scene where... Lawrence Fishburne is talking to Neo and he says, look, once you develop these skill sets, you won't have to dodge bullets anymore. And that's kind of what happens here is like once you develop this skill set of being really strong and healthy and, and, and enjoying nutritious food, which, which can taste really good too. So it's not like you're giving up tasty food for the rest of your life. You're just learning how to basically change your taste buds to real food instead of synthetic junk, which is what a lot of the junk food is. Once you get into that state, it's no longer about how do I resist this stuff, it's that you don't want it anymore. I can walk by, you can put cakes and all that stuff in front of me any time of the day and I won't want it because I'll start thinking, well, this is going to screw up my workout later on today or I feel great right now, I'm going to I'm gonna have to take a nap if I have that right now. So there's really a balance there, but at the same time, you want to live life in a way where you don't want to become so healthy that it's unhealthy. And what I mean by that is some people basically they take it a little, little bit too far where they're so focused on having the perfect diet, training, and this and that, that it actually creates a lot of stress. So now we're releasing cortisol all the time because we're always worried about, oh no, was my diet perfect today? Oh, maybe I didn't work out hard enough. And now you're in this stress state all the time, which basically takes away from the whole point of a productive nutrition and training program. So we don't want to get to the point where we make the whole process stressful. We do the best we can, we get the results, but from time to time you want to loosen up and have a good time with different things and don't miss out having good fun social occasions with friends and family from time to time just because you think it might screw up your training or nutrition program. That's where I'm going. Brilliant. That's a fantastic way to end. Thanks Thank so you. much for sparing us the time today, Mike. Thank you. Have a great day. Have a great day. Bye-bye.